I think I read like, I think I read over 10 hours one day. Welcome back to another Liberty Books Review. My name's Liam and I hope you're reading well. Today we're talking about Narcissus and Goldman by Herman Hesse, which is one of few Herman Hesse novels which are on the Western canon. Fewer people read this, a lot of people read Siddhartha or Steppenwolf. This is the first Herman Hesse book I've ever read and it's really great. It's a very complete novel. I imagine his shorter works, which are more popular, might not cover the same ground and I've heard they have quite a different tone in that these characters in this book seem a lot more self-conscious and accepting whereas in other books we have more anti-heroes, obnoxious characters, a little bit more of that. So I think this is a really fantastic book. It's one of my favorites. So let's get right into it. Narcissus and Goldman reads like the bleak adventure of Cormac McCarthy's The Road combined with the psychological introspection of Patrick Suskin's perfume, but then with a, a new layer of philosophical intrigue and psychoanalysis. We've got a lot of Jung, Jungian... <laughs> Jungian. We've got, a we've got a lot of Jungian symbolism. We've got a lot of Jungian symbolism and even some analytical philosophy in there, like Wittgenstein's Tractatus comes into play. It's just a very well-bodied, mature work of one man's adventure through his life. And above these works, Narcissus and Goldman feels like a really complete story that's just so wise and brimming with so much information. Each sentence is so much detail. You can have a new character arrive and then die just suddenly, like just like that in an instant. And so much is packed into these words. I think 60 pages in, I was already realizing I had like a full Freudian character arc. I fully understood these two characters in their youth and it was just more than most contemporary stories cover in like 200-300 pages and the first 60 pages was done here. So it's a really really condensed and amazing book. It makes me think that classic literature really is like nectar, you know? It's very dense and very rich in meaning and all this contemporary stuff that's out these days is just so quick and easy to read and enjoyable but there's no substance to it. It's really just diluted. It's just action and action and action without meaning. I think I read like, I think I read like, I think I read over 10 hours one day because I kind of just wanted to finish this. There's just so much that went through. I felt like I experienced a full lifetime in one day where I read about 10 hours of this book just because I couldn't stop. So I, I really do like this adventure. It's one of my favorites of all time. Well, I wouldn't recommend reading this as hastily as I did. Take your time with it because it's a long story and every sentence really needs to be thought about. Narcissus and Goldman is the story of two very likable Christian monks. One is good and one is bad. At least that's what we're led to believe at the beginning of the story. And we follow their journey through life and all of their reflections are just compounded in this amazing work. We follow Goldman in his youth who leaves the Christian cloister to explore the outer world and it's such an adventure. But it's hard to say whether this is a philosophical novel, an adventure story, it could even be erotica, a dystopia, it could be a piece of theology. It's really hard to classify the genre of this fiction, but it's amazing. Every sentence is really profound and packed with this poetic meaning and it doesn't come off as pretentious, it comes off as very earnest and wise. There are a lot of sex scenes but it doesn't come off as unnecessary, offensive or awkward or just a plot device. It seems all somehow relevant. There's so much meaning here that you feel like you're learning something every time something happens in the story. But it's not always clear what that is. It opens many doors but it doesn't lead the way. If there's any overarching moral to Narcissus and Goldman, I think it's that Herman Hesse is calling for a world which is more balanced, that the world needs thinkers and artists, and it's everyone's duty to try and restrain their passion as much as it allows them to pursue love. It's a humbling story that cautions readers to be careful what they wish for and to know themselves before they pursue what they desire. In the context of Nazi Germany, seen through the eclipse of reason, Hesse goes further than Kafka or Rilke in dealing with this philosophical issue of subjective reason as he actually quotes philosophy quite pretty clearly in this book. 
For instance, he paraphrases Wittgenstein's picture theory, which in itself was an argument against the ability of reason to disprove the belief in a god. Because God lies outside of the world, reasonable things don't, can't be assessed in that way. And Hess also seems acquainted with Jungian symbolism on the basis of the dream images that his characters have, which in itself Jung, Jung's theories do promote spirituality as a belief system and as a way of knowing about the world. As both Wittgenstein and Jung's works were being published in Austria, it shows that Hess was very up to date what was going on in the world, and this comes from quite an academic intellectual perspective rather than what he was just seeing. Hess suggests that artists generate new concepts and thinkers use those concepts to make theories, and he therefore suggests rationality only really helps us interpret the use of things that are already known. That rationality is used for ends and not means, which is an argument for objective and not subjective reason. In a way, Goldman as a character is a retaliation against subjective reason because he uses the passion and sensuality of an artist to generate knowledge about the world. And there's a lot of questioning about what is good, what is the right way of being in this book. So objective reason is found in Narcissus and Goldman and in Sons to Orpheus by Rilke where subjective reason is found in the trial by Kafka. And you can really contrast just the way that these worlds work. There's so much passion in Hess and Rilke, and there's so much chaos and brutality in Kafka. And this contrast in itself is already showing me that there is this great divide and difference within German literature around the time of World War II. So this is at least leading to some theories being generated, and I hope that if you try find this book, you're gonna really get a great adventure story out of it. Whether or not you see it from these perspectives, there are so many angles and so many ideas you can get from this wonderful story that is really entertaining, continuously changing, very hard to predict, and it's just a fantastic work. It's very long, slowly chew over it, and you're gonna really develop as an individual. This is great personal development work here. Go find this book if you can, it's fantastic. Happy reading.